What up, amigos? It's been a minute since the last video, but here we are. We're back again with another recently completed collectible uh, display bust uh, that I created out of several pieces that I'll be talking about um, in a minute here. But uh, yeah, as you can see, this is my interpretation, my reimagining uh, of a Green Goblin. Uh, a cinematic style MCU. You know how I do. If you've been following me for a while, you know how I like to do reimaginings um, based on concept art, even fan art. Um, but yeah, just basically reimagining a character that's on film um, or uh, video games or whatever the case may be. I did a, a Boba Fett reimagining uh, quite a number of years back, but um, it's something that really. Uh, gets my juices flowing, my creative juices flowing. And um, I had this beautiful mask by Immortal uh, that it just deserved uh, a whole display piece uh, because I knew I wasn't gonna be wearing it often enough for you know, uh, cosplay purposes as a costume. So I really wanted to turn it into uh, a display piece that I can enjoy you know, year long. Uh, but yeah, the piece, uh, the resistance here, if that's even the expression, is the mask by Immortal Masks. Uh, it's a silicone, uh, beautifully uh, finished and painted mask uh, by the team over at Immortal Masks. This was an existing uh, sculpt that they had, and uh, it's, you know, they do masks that resemble certain characters that we might know from, from film or, or just like popular characters. A lot of them very, you know, uh, creepy, scary characters. Uh, and this was a mask that they had that was kind of like a goblin, you know, kind of like a, an evil uh, orc type of mask. And um, it really looked to me like it really reminded me of uh, ADI's test makeup for Spider-Man 1 back in the day. Um, so back before uh, Spider-Man 1 came out in the early 2000s, they were playing with doing uh, the Green Goblin as a makeup appliance um, on the actor. I don't even know if they for sure knew uh, Willem Dafoe was gonna be the guy playing the goblin, um, but um, I think I heard uh, that they started on the makeup and the look before they they had nailed uh, Willem Dafoe down uh, for the part. So they wanted to give it kind of this monstrous look. If you've seen the videos, works really, really nicely, really well, it's really believable. But once I think they had Willem Dafoe and just the range that guy has and the faces that he can make on his own, uh, it kind of made sense that they kind of scrapped the makeup. But it still lives in an infamy uh, as one of those like really, really cool what if uh, concept um, behind the scene footage pieces that, uh, you know, we can just imagine what would have been like if that's what they went for for the final movie. Um, so that makeup had like some animatronics if it would rough as a performer in the test footage and you can see really how he animates the face and all the expressions that he makes. It's really impressive. I, I wish this had like animatronics in it but it obviously does not. Uh, but one of the things that was really cool was the eyes. The Alex Ross lenses where you can see the eyes underneath. It's still something I may or may not incorporate into this are some glass eyes. But these are fully removable. So you can see here uh, what they did was just use, you know, those like Easter egg toys uh, that come in with like a little egg and you split it open. They gave it a, a nice uh, like uh, transparent paint job and uh, they made the modification here so that it would like fit in place. And there we go. Beautiful job by Immortal Masks. And I really wanna thank uh, my friend George uh, from Immortal again uh, for hooking me up with this beautiful piece. Uh, what I added here were uh, just uh, basically, uh, if you remember my Venom, my concept Venom uh, costume, um, that also has an immortal mask, uh, silicone mask that I put some fabric on it and I incorporated, uh, you know, the look from from the film with the with the fabrics, but uh, just put that on top of the mask in a way that it would make sense, where it looked still like you know like an alien, and not uh, a mask with a with another mask on top of it, but like just the fabric is almost kind of like a skin 
um, to that to that uh, silicone mask. So with this, I the only thing I added it wasn't nearly as complicated. It was just uh, the little hood, the goblin hood. Uh, and this is just kind of pinned here. It's not glued on there permanently. Uh, so I'm gonna start talking about like the cool pieces that are incorporated into this bust. Um, the hood itself, um, the fabric, the screen printed fabric is actually uh, test fabric from what they ended up using on the new Goblin, uh, James Franco's new Goblin costume. So I had this little bit of fabric uh, left over and instead of just keeping it, you know, in a drawer or in a bag I decided to make a, a hood out of it and include it in the bust uh, You're gonna notice that's like the theme with this uh, with these kinds of collectible things that I do uh, They're meant to display other like production made pieces that sometimes I'm able to get that I just you know, I, I Think what can I do with these instead of just keeping them? Um, in a drawer locked away how can i enjoy them uh, by looking at them and uh, maybe get them to kind of fulfill what they were meant for uh, so that's one example here the other example is uh since we're back here the vest is actually an oakley uh vest if you remember in the first film uh for some reason they were working uh closely with oakley um, they made the lenses initially for the spider-man mask and another uh, Oakley uh, product that they used, at least in pre-production, was this vest that had all these like buckles and everything um, in the Spider-Man 3 film for James Franco. So I think they might have just, you know, uh, gone and found something that they liked that had like a lot of buckles and a lot of straps to it that they you know it just happened to be Oakley or they might have been working with Oakley again but this is actually uh, a pre-production uh, piece that they used for initial concepts uh, and it's an Oakley vest that I would imagine is discontinued now but that's what I'm using here as the base for this bust next up uh, just keeping on with the with the theme this piece right here I'm gonna zoom in or show you guys in a different shot. This piece right here was what the armor was gonna look like in the original um, uh, suit of armor that they were gonna use for, for Green Goblin in the first film. And you can see like it has like, kind of like techie, uh, techie look to it, very tactical, very army advanced, like tactical gear. Uh, but the cool thing as I understand it is that it was gonna light up so those night shots would have looked really cool with the armor just kind of lighting up. Um, so that's another small production piece that I had that I just ended up utilizing here. Same with these little hoses. You know, what better, I mean, it's just rubber hosing for like a sprinkler system, but this was actually used by the team uh, when they were working on just kind of putting things together and uh, basically a lot of kit bashing happens when you're trying to come up with the with the costume um, so that's a little bit of hose that i ended up using here as well as these this hardware right here these griblies are also original um griblies that ended up being used in the uh, willem dafoe costume but uh these are actually original and they were painted green uh when we know at the end they just ended up going with a, a gold look copper goldish look to it uh, what else the armor pieces here these are just kind of my own flair that i added just to kind of make it look uh like give it a little bit of that recognizable uh comic book scheme with the purple uh but keeping with the theme of a tactical advanced army uh you know uh gear so as you can probably tell by now uh my whole idea here was to create one single bust, display bust, that incorporated all the goblins uh, from the pre-production sketches all the way to No Way Home, as what you see here with the, with the pumpkin bag, the army surplus uh, army bag here. Uh, another thing here in the back, you'll see is the, this little sword uh, incorporated because uh, James Franco's new goblin has that 
that uh, little mach machete that, that he has. And this is actually real, it's, it's sharp. Um, so I incorporated that here. And all of the hosing, uh, it's pretty much a sprinkler system hosing back here, down here on the sleeves. Uh, it's uh, just going along the lines of what they were working with initially for that uh, first uh, Green Goblin costume. Uh, the hardware here are all Oakley buckles and pieces. There's a lot of, you know, just little things that I added just for visual interest. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm going to show you guys a nice little uh, set of, uh, of uh, pictures and some video. And I hope you guys like it. Um, this is just part of my, you know, just my personal projects. Things that I enjoy working on uh, for myself, for my own collection. And it's becoming a theme. Uh, with the Venom uh, suit and now this uh, let's see if I can do maybe Doc Ock next or Sandman maybe Sandman will just be a little pile of dirt in my shop uh, where I display these guys too we'll see uh, anyways thank you so uh, much for watching I hope you like the video and if you like this kind of stuff um, I usually show all of this stuff first on my patreon as I work on things uh, that's where I share a lot of like my techniques and also as I'm working on things just kind of my mindset as I'm putting things together uh, if you know what I'm thinking about and sometimes I get your guys' input there as well so if you're interested in that sort of thing uh, I do have that patreon page uh, if not I just post all the uh, stuff as I'm done with it like uh, all my little nice pictures and video uh, sizzle reel if you will on here on YouTube and my Instagram and then on TikTok, I do have a TikTok and I just post random crazy shit on TikTok. So uh, if you go, if you do subscribe to my TikTok and sometimes uh, you just get like random stuff that you don't understand. Uh, yeah, it's, it's because that's kind of how my mind is sometimes. Sometimes I just go crazy. <laughs> All right, so I hope you guys uh, liked it. Thanks again, bye.